Hello and welcome back to Making Sense of Sounds and Scribbles. This is the reading teacher, Miss Keller, and this is lesson six, the long and short sound of I. We are looking at lessons that go with this companion book that you can get from Amazon, Making Sense of Sounds and Scribbles. This book is intended and these video lessons are intended to help secondary teachers cover the basis for teaching reading in their English class in bite-sized chunks so that you can do it systematically and uh, see some success with your students and uh, obviously as at your own pace. All right, uh, let's get on with the vowels and moving on to the short sound of I. Here's our first sound card. As you put the sound card up, tell them that the short sound of I is represented by the, you know, the I is the I, excuse me, is the I sound. So the short sound of I is I, sounds like an I-H, right? I. And here are a list of short I words that are CBC words, meaning a consonant and a vowel and a consonant. Invite your students to write these words off of the sound card into their notes in the book. Other words that have a short I, ditch, witch, and witch, city, pity, and witty, and sick, and kick. Have your kids write any other words that they can come up with with the short sound of I. Put those in your sound book. This is kind of a, um, the short vowel sounds are kind of easy. It is important to have CVC words when you're doing the short vowel sounds because it very clearly illustrates and reminds them that's a consonant that's a vowel and that's a consonant. Um, that's important when you start looking at different word patterns and you have to start breaking words up into syllables. They really need to know which letters are consonants and which ones are vowels um, and know, for example, between consonants, when are you going to split up the vowel? Like where are you going to put it? So that's going to come in lesson 12 and there's a little bit there's a little bit more to it than that, but it is important to sort of layer the vocabulary and the understanding as we as it becomes more complex. Again, these lessons are intended to help you systematically cover areas and these small little gaps that the kids have in their literacy. And not every kid's going to be in the same boat, but this this allows you to kind of keep track of of what you have covered sound wise and what letters represent what sounds. So let's move on to the long vowel sounds. Uh, or long vowel sound of I is I. It's important to at this point remind the students that when you have two vowels working together as one sound, that is a vowel team and we never break up vowel teams when we're dividing words into syllables. You can see all the sound cards there. There are several ways to represent the long sound of I. Now let's get started, shall we? Because time is a-wasting. The long sound of I. Start out with saying the long sound of I is I. And do a little callback with kids. Point at them. What is the long sound of I? And have them, you know, I, I, I. However you want to do it. Here's our list of words that you want them to write down. Idea, idle, pirate, Irish, silent, pilot, and tiny. Again, you can have any other words, but steer away from any words that have other letters in there that are making the I or representing the long I sound. For this reason, I have this list because it allows me to talk about how every syllable has to have a vowel and that when you break a word into syllables, that when a syllable ends on a vowel, that it's going to be a long vowel sound. Okay, so open syllables end on a vowel and represent, and are usually long vowel sounds. First one, idea, three syllables. I is separated into a syllable by itself, and it that makes it open and it's long, same with idle. And pirate is two syllables. And the first syllable, P-I, ends on the I, making it open, meaning that it's going to be a long syllable. Silent follows the same pattern. Now, between us as educators, it's uh, it's important to for us to know that 
coming up are going to be odd vowel sounds and the schwa sound. And those things take a little bit more knowledge and a little, a little bit more building up to. We are either systematically teaching things that are at the basic level or reviewing things. And so you can move at your own pace with that. So just know that I oftentimes use the word, I'll say like, are mostly or usually an open syllable or you or excuse me, a long syllable, or that's going to usually be a short syllable because sometimes they aren't and it's going to follow some other rule patterns. But for right now, that students should be coming familiar with open syllables and on a vowel and it's a long vowel sound, closed syllables um, and on a consonant. And that's going to usually be a short vowel sound. So I just start kind of rolling that in there. Next, we have the long sound of I represented with an I and a silent E. The first thing I do is remind students that the silent E is there for our eyes um, to recognize the print. Uh, so that is telling us, hey, that's going to be a long vowel sound. And I also remind them that words in English don't uh, when there's an E at the end of an English word, that it doesn't have a sound, that it's always going to be silent. Words from other languages, especially Latin-based languages like Spanish or Italian, when you see an E on the end, you will be pronouncing that. And that's really important to make that um, explicit notation, especially if you have kids that are second language learners and they happen to have uh, speak Spanish. In my area, that's Kind of the overwhelming second language that we have so and in our community we, we do have a lot of words of uh spanish origin so we do see the e sound having a sound anyway it's important to teach them that there are patterns to look for like this one when there's a vowel and then there's a consonant and then there's a then there's an e at the end that that's likely going to be silent, especially if the word has an English origin. Okay, so moving on to the next sound card. Long I again, the reminding them that the sound of long I is I, and we can also spell that. Oh, I lost my, this happens all the time. I wish I could change that. I can't reprogram that. That's not in my my uh, permissions, I guess. So I have no control over when my lights are going to keep shutting on and off. I don't know if you have that in your room, but it really bugs the heck out of me. It's always turning off when I'm doing work. Anyway, and it's way, way over there. All right. Uh, where was I? We were right with IE. I don't have a lot of words up on this list, but if you can come up with some others in your class, please write those down in the sound book and encourage that back and forth with your kiddos. And moving on to the next sound card. This one is a super vowel team. And I call it a super vowel team because there's more than two vowel, uh, two letters working together. In this one, we have the I-G-H. The G-H is silent. It's connected all the time with the I-G-H. And we see that in a lot of words that we use. Bright, sight, tight, fight, and right. Uh, have your kids write down some other words that you might be able to come up with in class that have the I-G-H and remind them that it's a super vowel team. All these letters go together. They're stuck together like glue. They're besties and we don't ever separate them because we need them all together to represent that long sound of I. And there is a historical origin about why the G-H is, is, is in there and it's silent, but um, you don't really need to like go into that if you don't want to. It's just good that they know, okay, these letters are going to go together all the time and we don't split them up when we're dividing words into syllables and that when you see the GH right after the I, that it's always going to be silent. Okay, next sound card is the last one. Sometimes we read Y as the long I sound at the end of a word and even in the uh, beginning of a word. So Y represents the long sound of I. When a C is followed by a Y, the Y is usually a long I sound. 
So we have my, try, shy, and why. The Y is at the end, so it's representing the long I sound. And that it's also kind of like an open syllable, right? And we have deny, rely, apply, terrify, and horrify. And then we have cyclone, cyborg, and tycoon. The Y is most of the time going to be a vowel. When we teach our students that little phrase, A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes Y, we really should say A-E-I-O-U, and most of the time, Y. When the Y is at the beginning of a word, that's when you're going to have it represent the Y sound, right? Like yam and yellow. That's when it's being a consonant. But every other time, it's not acting like a consonant. It's acting like a vowel, right? It's at the end of the word, or it's in the middle of the word somewhere, and it's going to be a long I sound and sometimes a long E sound. And, you know, we covered that already. Anyway, so this is the last sound card to teach the spelling and representation of the long and short sounds of I. And up next is going to be a nice little big batch with J, K, L, M, N. And we're going to cover all those sounds and the ways to represent those. And that's it. So I will see you next time and thank you so much. Remember, I will leave a link to the slideshow in the comment section or in the information section of the YouTube video so that you can access that and use a slideshow without me talking in the corner um, with your kiddos. And again, go at your own pace. Take it five, 10 minutes a day, every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Tuesday, Thursdays. The key is to systematically cover all of the sounds and how those sounds are spelled uh, in the sound book. Cover those with your students. And I encourage you to make maybe like little mini spelling lists based on the words that you generate, etc. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to sign off for now and have a lovely day.